we'll, we'll start uh, this lecture by definition of group and the purpose of these lectures is to, ma is to mainly um, discuss about the application of groups in quantum field theory and quantum mechanics. So it's mostly we are looking from viewpoint of physicists. So let's start by definition of a group. Um, so if there are, let's say, if a group has, let's say, some elements A, B, and C, and so on, then, and let's say this belongs to a group G, then these elements should satisfy four conditions so that they can be labeled as group. So there should be there are four requirements for these elements to satisfy. So the first condition is that that product of two group, two elements A and B should belong to G, which means that if A belongs to G, B belongs to G. then we know that C should also belong to G. That is the first criteria. Now what do we mean by product of two elements? By product means some operation between the two elements. Uh, not necessarily mean multiplication, but some operation. And it will become more clear what actually is the meaning of operation. Okay, the second one is that there should be, uh, the group element should satisfy associative law, which means a, B, C should be same as A, B, C, something like that. So product of A and B and then producted with C should be same as product of B and C, which is producted with A. And this is associativity. This should be satisfied. The third condition is inverse. Well, let's take something else, which is called unit element. The third condition is there should be a unit element, which means that if E is the unit element, then AE equals EA equals A. So my product of any element with the unity element uh, or product of an unity element with any element should give back the original element back. So E is the unit element. Fourth one is there should be an inverse, the existence of an inverse, which means that if there is an element A, there should also be an inverse A inverse such that this is satisfied. So these are four conditions which are required. Uh, for example, group of integers. So we know that 2 plus 3 equals, let's call this G, 5. So we know that 2 belongs to G, 3 belongs to G, so 5 also belongs to G. We also know, know that 2 plus 3 plus 5 equals 2 plus 3 plus 5, which means it satisfies the associativity also. This is the first condition, this is the second condition. The third one is that 2 plus 0 equals 0 plus 2 equals 2. So 0 is the unity element and the fourth one is that 2 minus 2 equals minus 2 plus 2 equals 0. So there's an inverse. The product here or the operation between the group elements is addition. So it satisfies all four conditions. Uh, let's take one more example. Let's say 2 cross 2 matrices, call this G. We know that if AB equals C, then for sure C will belong to G. If A and B belong to G. So that is the first condition which is met. The second is, we know that a, B, C, that is multiplication of matrices, is same as A, B, C. So mat the matrix multiplication satisfies uh, this criteria. The third one is A, I equals I, A equals A, where I is the identity matrix. 
And the fourth one is that a a inverse equals a inverse a equals i. So there's an all there's an inverse for a. Okay, now we are actually sort of talking about invertible matrices. That a should be invertible. There should be an inverse acting because there there are in matrices which do uh, which do not have inverse. So we are actually talking about in, we should have written invertible matrices. There's one thing uh, which can also be to told about these two types of group. Here we see that the the operation a b is same as b a, which means 2 plus 3 is same as 3 plus 2. But this is not true here, which means a b is not same as b a. So this is called, these kind of groups are called abelian groups and these are called non-abelian groups. And these groups play a good, good role um, in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. So these were some definitions and we'll have more definitions in the following lectures.